Okay, so we're in Gaia EAP, Early Access Preview. We're in build 4108. And the interface has undergone a few uh, basic changes that we're gonna take a quick look at. If you're new to the interface overall, I'm gonna run you through all that as well. So uh, the first thing that you can see up here next to the Gaia interface um, logo is a little preference bar. Uh, we have options like new, open, open recent, save and save as. Just as we have it over here, the new, open, save, and then we have an incremental save, which is save 01, 02, 03, etc. We have um, some preview related options that are here. We have the options for licenses. So when you get a new license and you want to update that, you can uh, load that information from here. Um, if a new license is required, often it will show up on the splash screen as well, so you'll have that option. Inside the preferences, we have some basic options, so default workflow and stuff like that. Again, this is something that can be changed on the splash screen when it comes up, so it's going to ask you what version of um, Gaia that you want to use, be it a layer mode or graph mode. And this can also be set after the fact via the workflow settings where you can switch between graph and layer mode there. Inside here we have the graph style. Typically we have the routed polylines, which are uh, actually pretty decent. They automatically update to try and get out of your way. But if you find that um, they're getting in your way or you don't like them, just whatever the, the reason may be, you can change that to a simple Bezier, which is just a simple Bezier line that goes from point A to point B. Uh, so there's a few additional options that you can play with if you want. Uh, remember that these uh, default kind of things, uh, they're, uh, the basic defaults, most of those settings can be changed within the interface. Inside the viewport, we have a viewport quality uh, that you can change. Uh, we have this option for an attached viewport. And so that's this viewport right here that we're talking about. If you turn that off, this becomes a detached viewport, which you can then drag off to your alternate monitor if you have one and go full sc screen with that as well as full screen with this graph. Uh, simply clicking it off will uh, make that work for you. Um, the viewport stays on top is uh, the default, so it's always going to sit on top of everything else that's there. Uh, if you want to turn this off, you're going to have to turn it off and then chances are you'll have to restart Gaia for it to actually take effect. So um, you may turn it off and think, okay, it's not working, but that's not the case. Just simply restart Gaia after you've, you've done this and it should function as expected. In the main viewport, typically speaking, you have this Alt on. I'm noticing a lot of people would prefer not to have to press Alt, which is totally fine. Um, Alt is just mimicking things like uh, Unreal, um, Unity, uh, Maya, uh, a whole bunch of other software, which is alt-based navigation. So it's just to work with muscle memory for those people that are used to that. However, you can, of course, just turn that off and you can just drag in the viewport. Uh, by default, it's set up with the left mouse button to be your orbit button, and uh, you can invert the orbit axis should you desire. Again, default resolution related information. This is kind of like what when you start up Gaia, what it's, it's set to, but these can always be changed uh, at your desire. Basic preferences are currently grayed out, uh, but they're, they're things that you can set over here. And then of course we have um, some preferences such as check for updates, which obviously you want to know when the next update is available. And of course you want to send uh, some anonymous usage data to QuadSpinner so that they can continue to improve upon the software and fix bugs and all the other things that you obviously want them to do. So you'll probably leave those on. Okay, so uh, this next bar here is fairly useful. This is your preview resolution. Uh, you can change this between 512 all the way up to 4K. Uh, of course, changing this means that it will rebuild all the nodes because it has to build them at that resolution. So be aware that changing this is something that you wanna do um, only when you need to see like a higher res preview or something like that, or 
um, you can change it at the beginning if you have like a preference. We have the viewport modes which are available to you. So this is the orbit mode we're in currently, but we can switch to something like a first person or an orthographic view. Again, uh, left mouse button and the wheel mouse are ways that you navigate this viewport, but you can use the W, A, S, D to navigate in these windows as well, both in the first person as well as in this main viewport. Some of these options over here used to be within the viewport and they've been moved out to give you cleaner viewport um, captures. So things like the default materials that are available, these are of course separate from the color information that you can apply instead. And uh, there's just a variety of uh, basic materials and textures that you can use for preview purposes. They do not export like that. Um, they'll just export height map and if you've created a color map you'll export the color map but these are just materials for within the viewport. You can of course change the lighting information so you can change the azimuth and the altitude so basically this is the spin of the sun around the earth and then the altitude of the sun in the sky. Of course ambient lighting so this is the idea of bounce light, light coming from the sky um, and then the brightness of the sun itself. You have the sky box which uh, um, when you make certain changes uh, will turn itself on and stay on so you just simply going in here turning it off again if you want to get rid of it and just get that gray background. You will notice when you've changed the sky box on and off that lighting may change the first time that you turn it on and off and the lighting will remain the way it was for this not a super big deal it's all based on this information. We have the water level which you can turn on and off and of course adjust the height of at your desire. Some other basic preferences with regards to how it treats the terrain, what kind of scale it should be sort of previewed at uh, or assumed at, then this will deal with all sorts of things. And of course you have your contour information which you can turn on to see live contours. We have our build resolution, which you can change, and of course our build button, which will give you options for saving. Here's our properties panel. The properties panel, of course, is related to what you're currently working with. Uh, the difference with the property panel will come down to things like this apply button. Some things will not have an apply button. Some things will. Um, the way that these work is sometimes you'll pull on these things and it will update as you drag. Others will update when you release and others will not update at all until you hit the apply button. This has to do with the amount of work each individual node will have to do in order to provide you with the end result. At a 512 resolution, most of them are going to be fairly fast anyways if you have a fairly decent computer but um, this has been built in for previews that are going to much higher um, resolutions. Uh, you know, if you want to preview at a 4K, it's going to take a while for it to churn through really heavy uh, node graphs that may be coming before that in order to get to this, this end result. Um, so you may want to change a number of features and then you can hit apply. Whereas if you would change these different features and have to rebuild the node from scratch, um, it would get annoying if you had still a couple of other settings that you needed to change. You may notice that a lot of these things when you hover over them will give you some information about them. Just as the nodes when you hover over them will give you information about their build time and their names. And this is because of course you can uh, double click on these guys and change the name, uh, rename the node so that you can give it more information. You can also double click on any wire and add comments to them. This is a comment. Right now I've got this scaled down to a 1280 by 720. Um, so that affects uh, the resolution when I zoom in and zoom out. So um, normally speaking I'm working at a 19, uh, 1920 resolution. So it's usually not an issue. but just something to be aware of if you've got a smaller computer screen um, you may need to zoom in to see what these things are saying. Um, addition, 
Additional information to these is the post process where you can turn on things automatically like auto level or how much influence it has and clamping which are available to you to, to mess with on each node rather than having to add those nodes separately so that you have those. Navigation in this viewport is control based. So you hold down control and uh, you have your wheel mouse. Um, I don't think that the control um, settings are available to change this to work differently from this, but you do have this off to the side, which is just a left click drag. So if you just want to be able to quickly grab and drag around in the interface, then you can do that. And um, this will zoom in and out uh, on that as well, but your wheel mouse still works. So you can, you can drag around and wheel in and out. To close that, you can just simply click that button again. We have some additional preference options for things like viewing the grid, whether or not the snap to grid or snap to items are available. Um, and we have the show 2D view, which is actually already visible here. If we click on that, um, we have to have something selected. Uh, when we click on it, it's gonna show us that node and we can uh, change the preview mode where we have red showing height information. And we can also switch that to a black and white information. Right now, this is um, the same as if we applied an auto levels, the preview that we're seeing. Uh, what you may notice in this viewport is this is actually not the maximum height this can be. So uh, what this really looks like is if I hit this button, you can see that it's dropped in intensity and that's actually the height of that and, and what we'll export if we don't do an auto levels on it. In addition to this, you'll also notice there are additional outputs that are available to you. And these outputs are, are available through uh, this interface. So if we just click on this, we have our where and our deposit and flow so that you can preview all these things and get a good handle on that. Just close that. Something that I didn't mention about this interface is that you can also grab corners of these and drag them around to alter their direction. When you're doing a complex build, you can hit this button right here, which will cancel the running process. Um, this may not work on all nodes and it gives you that warning when you hover over it. These are your commonly used nodes. And of course, each node is under a category here, which you can um, just kind of pan through and look through them to see the options. So you have your primitives, adjustments, etc. cetera. Um, so a number of features that are available there. If you know the object by name, you can of course go through them this way and uh, get to them like that. Um, so if I'm looking for something like say combine, I can start typing it and I'll get that. I can also right click inside the interface. Um, I can get this all into the view. Well, most of it's in the view. Um, there's a whole bunch of these uh, visible here so you can see them all in their uh, wider screen sort of context so that you get an idea of what's available to you so it's just another way of, of doing that and you can click on them and they'll actually create them um, the uh, the work mode that you can can go with so I can change between uh, graph and layers with a little drop down it's going to ask me uh, you'll notice that the graphical interface will change slightly. You get a layers mode similar to what you would have in Photoshop. And this add node is that same panel that we saw with the right click. You still have your properties and post processes. It's just, these are all like this. We can of course switch back to a graph mode, which is fairly easy. And uh, I think that's pretty much it for the interface. I don't think I've forgotten anything. Um, other than this button, which doesn't appear to be working at the moment. Normally speaking, you're supposed to be able to grab multiple nodes and uh, do this, but it doesn't seem to always function. So I went through things like a couple of primitives and grab them both. Uh, and now it's working. So 
Uh, I'm not sure why it wasn't working for me a little bit earlier, but there it is. So it's just an auto connect to create a combine, so you don't have to go and hunt down a combine on your own. Uh, to get rid of these, you simply have to press delete, and that's good. And you can also cl uh, click on any kind of um, uh, graph line and delete those as well in order to disconnect them should you desire. Uh, dragging a node to node connection. You can see it will highlight which node uh, input that you're over top of. And of course you can drag to the middle of these and you can have inputs and outputs uh, that you can connect to directly. So um, a few different options if you are having difficulty clicking on these individual points. So that's it for the basic interface of Gaia. Hopefully you found this useful and uh, I'll come up with some additional features in the next video.